Thank you so much for joining us. Happy Sunday. We are coming at you live from downtown Lethbridge. I'm Kelly Barrett. This is Etc. here on Just FM. Really, really excited for today's show. I have a couple of friends down here to help me out with some really fantastic road stories. Uh, we've got Ian Morris here, local bass and vocalist and uh, artiste, uh, to help us out. And we've also got uh, Razman Bruce here. Uh, Raz is a local drummer. And we've got some fantastic road stories to share with you today. I just want to take a second and thank uh, everybody that took some time to send in your stories. Uh, much appreciated. And uh, once again, we are on every Sunday now. Our new time is noon, and we will be here live. Uh, also, stick around for the end of the show, folks. We have a big announcement for my guest next week. Uh, Three-time Gemini uh, winner, award winner, and a super famous Canadian, so you want to check in for that. I am going to go ahead and start with our first story, which comes from Curtis Vasselnack. Uh, Curtis is right here from Lethbridge. Uh, he is the guitar player for, one of the guitar players for Tyrants of Chaos. And Curtis says this, In the late 80s, my band Angel Beast, uh, which was based in Toronto, won a 50-band Battle of the Bands for a showcase in L.A. Cool. Uh, we were the only Canadian band. Also cool. We checked into the hotel, this is good, we checked into the hotel which was booked for only bands and media and we were thinking this was the shit, no doubt. Our room had a door to an adjoining room that was filled with beer and other assorted beverages and we thought we were pretty damn special for having all of this set up for us. We proceeded to make ourselves at home when suddenly Rob Halford and Glenn Tipton walked in from the other, can you imagine, <laughs> walked in from the other room that was set up for interviews. We were pretty embarrassed as we had sucked back their alcohol and figured we pretty much owned the place. <laughs> what was it? Yes. <laughs> we apologized, no shit, as good Canadians always do, and they, also being good Canadians, told us to hang out and watch the interviews. It was pretty epic, no doubt. About an hour later, uh, we were partying with a few guys named Phil, Vinny, Rex, and Dimebag if you can get that, had no idea who they were. Uh, they asked us to come check out their set that night. We were blown away by this band called Pantera. Can you I've, heard of them? I've heard of Pantera a time or two. Uh, it was quite humbling how good they were. Awesome. Wow, Curtis Vasselnack, th thank you for sending that in. Could you imagine just making yourself to home on other people's booze? <laughs> oh, we did it intentionally a couple times back in the day. <laughs> intentionally, like, oh, yeah. Cool. Oh, the, Whose the, booze is this? Oh, the, I think the, it's ours. The main act, the main, <laughs> if the main act was on stage, I mean, no one was in the green room, right? right? So let's go raid the fridge. That's why you ought to be in a band in the first place. <laughs> yeah. Get the free booze, yeah. eh? I got, I got one here from uh, Paul Denton. Uh, he's a bass player here in uh, Lethbridge uh, for Snakebite and Tribute to White Snake. Uh, Livewire, Motley Crue experience, and of course the Def Leppard experience. Um, uh, so Paul sends in, uh, I believe our band name at the time was Jaded Heart. And the club was the Livewire in Calgary. And if you got a, I don't know, if you got a Motley Crue band, you play at the Livewire, right? Um, uh, anyone that remembers building uh, your own pyro back in the 80s, uh, <laughs> then you can relate to, uh, pyro. <laughs> to what happened next. I experienced this basically, uh, yeah, anyway. We know this isn't going to end well. Yeah, it never It's does. pyro. It's, it's pyro. not going to end well. And back in the day. Sorry. <laughs> okay. So this was between sets. Our light man slash pyrotech uh, loaded the flash pots with gunpowder and then uh, went up to the room for a few drinks with the uh, band. As, as you do. As you do. As you do. Yeah. Uh, after a few too many wobbly pops, he had uh, forgotten that the flash pots were loaded. And, you know, you proceed to reload them because, again, that's what you do. About 30 seconds into the first tune, they exploded with the biggest blast you can imagine. We lost power to the stage. Gun smoke filled the club. After the smoke cleared, we looked up and flash pots had blasted through the roof. <laughs> through the roof. <laughs> Uh, yeah. Uh, even better, though. I looked down, uh, and to my surprise, a huge piece of wood was sticking through my monitor, oh right my where I've been standing. Uh, yeah, funny enough, uh, they never got fired. They never got fired. <laughs> uh, I wonder if they had to pay for damages. <laughs> yeah, you know, painting ceilings and stuff. I'm guessing at uh, I'm guessing at best they were never invited back. 
Yeah, I'm no, I'm, I'm guessing. Uh, there's a band, <laughs> I mean, I grew up in Brandon, Manitoba, and I remember a Kiss tribute band coming through Black Diamond. And uh, the first time we ever seen them, and I think it was the first time they played the bar there, and it was a low ceiling, kind of tucked away in the stage, and the flash pots went off, and it was just filled with smoke. And the ceiling, there's just black marks all over the ceiling. <laughs> and I think they just the left them fight. there for years. <laughs> Anyway. Sad's character, right? That's, uh, yeah, Paul, we've, uh, yeah, any anybody that's, yeah, dealt with pyro. Yeah, you're putting gunpowder in a can. Uh, oh, man. <laughs> I still can't get over Curtis and I'm just, just meeting Pantera and not having a clue who it was. That's, that's a pretty cool story. Mm. And also, I just want to remind everybody, um, please, if you haven't seen the Tyrants, check them out, uh, www.tyrantsofchaosband.com. Uh, go and check them out, you guys. You're going to love them. And I think we're going to turn over to Raz here for a second. Alrighty, we got Robert Tax. That's T-A-K- Robert Takax from Vancouver. Takax from Vancouver. He's a guitar player, a vocalist, visual with edges of seven. It was the fall of 2009. Our manager secured us a label showcase in the whiskey in Hollywood. Yes! While we were all excited, I made a rather large mistake of booking everyone's travel and accommodations myself. Needless <laughs> to say, that took me a lot of time out, and the fact that I had to fast drive to Seattle made things even more complicated. We're in Vancouver-based band, mind you, but it was cheaper to fly out of Seattle, so off we went. Of Same course, way. we were stopped at the border. Of course. <laughs> the border, the border, and as it turns out, one of our guitar players had a 20-year-old pot charge. Oh, put it away, put it away. Stuff was, how do you go to the border knowing you have a pot charge and just like kind of remember it when you're at the border? Yep. Onto something in me. Anyway, well, I you just kind of forget it. I, I, don't, <laughs> I don't know. He's probably high. I'm, maybe it's just. <laughs> 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 All right. Well, the pot charge prevented him from entering the U.S., so right off the bat, we're down to one guitar player. Fortunately, nice. we're a two guitar player outfit. Okay. <laughs> Then comes a three-hour drive to Seattle, and of course, we miss the exit. We have to double back, and then we have to find a parking area. Where will the bus be at the airport? We stopped for directions. Tempers are starting to build, but we found it. <laughs> then we had to load all the gear into the bus, and it looks like we got from the other passengers was, yeah. We finally made it to the airport, boarded our jet just in time, and a couple hours later, we landed in LAX. That's Los Angeles Airport. Los Angeles Airport. All us music people know that. Yeah, (laughs) Yeah, that's it. I'm always landing in (laughs) Lax. From there on, for the most part, things went okay. Though the whole ordeal had kicked off and drained my, the gut and drained me. The show the following night, my nerves were shot. By the time we hit the stage, eh? oh, (laughs) I had very little, and unfortunately it showed in my performance. We still got to play most of the famous rock stages in the planet. So we try to remember the good stuff. Our bass player also met Trent Reznor. Trent Reznor! Trent Reznor, that's good, Nine Inch Nails, yeah, at a local record shop. And I walked by Seth Green, Scott Evil from Austin Powers, on Sunset Boulevard. Well, that's memories. That's definite memories right there, I tell you. I also share the elevator with actor Peter Postle Withy Wait. <laughs> that's a long name, <laughs> so man. I, I didn't rehearse that one. I'm sorry, I'm sorry Pete, was if that, I mispronounce was, it. Was that part of the nightmare? Or, or? I'm thinking. It's looking <laughs> like it. The yeah. usual suspects. He's the usual uh, suspects. Both he and... Seth Green were much shorter than I expected. They always are. People are always smaller in person. They try harder because they're smaller. (laughs) All in all, it was an adventure. Despite my horrible performance, still, it did live up to a tale to tell. Absolutely, Robert Takax. Thank you so much for sending that in. And, uh, yeah, you know, I think a lot of times when stuff like that happens, I think it's us that remember that part. You know, we remember the part and everyone else. No one notices that stuff, I don't think. You know, all good. Thanks so much, Robert. Uh, Over to you, Ian. Oh, okay. Uh, well, I guess I'm going to put these things on. Actually, you know what? I, I'm going to jump into the road story of my own, actually. Oh. So, uh, which one to tell? How about, uh, so back in the 90s, uh, this is something that not everybody knows about me, but um, I ended up getting uh, my licensed and my master hypnosis certificate. So I did a hypnotist show um, along with my band partner, Paul Murray, and we went on out on the road and we were doing hypnotist shows. And now I generally try to keep the show respectful 
you know, somewhat, depending on what the venue was, if it was a college bar, then of course it's going to be a little bit different, um, you know, than if it's an office party or whatnot. But we went to a small town in Alberta. Now, I can't tell you the name. Uh, it starts with an A, but I can tell you the name of the town because, you know, I don't want to get sued or I don't want to get calls at the station here. But um, so we show up to do the, to do the hypnotist show. And I come into the club to do the show, and there's this boss hog looking man sitting right at the front of the bar. And I, I'm pretty sure he, you know, he had a cowboy hat on, and he said something to me along the lines of, uh, come here, little lady, and, and proceeded to tell me that he thought hypnosis was a crock, and that I was a big fake and a fraud, and, and uh, really, really being insulting. And, um, you know, that's the kind of stuff that I was used to. So I gave him my patented hypnotist line. I said, you know, skepticism is a sign of intelligence. So feel free to just watch the show and prove it to yourself. If you're a skeptic, sit at the table, watch the show, follow along, and just prove it to yourself. And off I went. So I start the show, and uh, one of the skits that was really popular is where everybody became male dancers. Now, I would usually, usually use my judgment, and as soon as the shirts came off, again, depending on the venue, um, you know, when the pants started to come off, I would wake everybody up, much to their horror, and they were half naked. Um, and so Paul, as right you do, right? As you, you know, just a great old night, yeah. <laughs> and uh, so Paul would play You Can Leave Your Hat On, so just to sort of create a little scene. So, but right before I get to this skit, I'm, I, I'm you know, I'm, in, I'm doing my skits with my people, I'm putting them under, and, I, and I'm sensing this motion from the back of the room. And I look, and Buddy, he's down hard. The big skeptic, the little lady with the cowboy hat, he's down hard. So I gently take him up to the stage and sit him down, I know exactly I'm doing the strippers with this guy there. So we, Paul hits the music, you can leave your light on. He gets up and off comes the cowboy hat and he rips his shirt off. And I'm still, you know, I'm trying to be professional, but I'm still a little miffed that he called me a fake. And I'm thinking, you know, you just shouldn't have ought to done that. <laughs> so normally you would use your powers for good, not evil. But I just felt kind of evil that day. So I just, I let him run with it. And um, the shirt comes off, the bell comes off. And I'm kind of, you know, and Paul's looking at me, and I'm looking at him, and I'm like, whatever. Well, next thing you know, the pants come off. The guy's full frontal Monty, full frontal nudity in his bar in this town that I, again, can't, can't say the names, that I, you know, but it ends in an X. And uh, turns out it was the town mayor. So I actually kind of knowingly got the town mayor of this little town completely full frontal nude in, in his bar. And I never did that again, but it felt kind of nice, and, you know, maybe that was a little bit... <laughs> a little bit nasty, but... Oh, why not? That'll learn them. Well, you're just proving a point, right? I was just proving a point. Yeah. Do not insult the hip... And he, and he called me a hypmotist. So, for, you know, oh, he kind of had it coming, hip right? <laughs> Over to you, Ian. Awesome. This one's uh, Sherelle Jardine out of Vancouver. Uh, vocalist for uh, Stone Poets and Head. Uh, yeah, this one's funny. This is a good one. I like this one. Uh, <laughs> the one thing that sticks out for me is when I was releasing my Something Good Is Happening album. Uh, tore my Achilles heel playing uh, baseball. A guy running, uh, that I played with once, uh, he was running after someone who was stealing our gear after the game. And, <laughs> and he, honest to God, and he was, he was, he blew out his Achilles heel. And he was messed for months. It's anyway, a major injury. It's I a know. major injury, yeah. And I'm thinking, it's just gear, whatever. <laughs> but he did get the guy. <laughs> anyway, I'm sorry. Uh, uh, anyway, um, <laughs> so Sherelle had torn her Achilles heel playing uh, baseball. Um, had a full late cast and a big festival I was booked in. I did the show. One of the crew helped me on stage. And at the end of the show, no one uh, was on it to help me off. So, you know, I fell off the stage. How embarrassing, but... That Why was nobody there to help Sherelle off the stage? That's what we want to know, right? Shame on them. Well, <laughs> she didn't tell us, so, you know, that's probably part two. <coughs> anyway, uh, embarrassing, I guess. Um, but uh, that wasn't the crazy part. Uh, lots of people taking photos of me with my lovely cast after the show. People were signing it. All cool. Uh, a few weeks goes by, and I started getting these emails on my website. <clears throat> I'm talking hundreds a day. Each one saying they loved my music, they wanted to buy my CD, they loved me, and wanted to know when they could see me play again. Then a few people asked if I could send them a photo of me with my cast on. 
few more wanted to. Well, I mean, I mean, if you're at the show and whatever, and it's like, hey, we met this. She had the cast. I mean, sure, get a picture with the cast on. And Sherelle is gorgeous. If you've ever seen Sherelle Journey, she's absolutely gorgeous. So at th at this point, the story still almost kind of makes sense, right? Yeah, they just, you know, it's bizarre. Yeah. She's got a cast. She's gorgeous. Yeah. We want to get a hold of her and have okay. a picture. So yeah. Uh, Anyway, uh, she found, uh, she says that uh, she found that a little strange, you know, but uh, after hundreds of more emails, uh, I got a few that didn't mention my music at all, just my cast. So I asked one guy after a few emails back and forth, how did you find out about me? And he said, your photo is on a caster's site. So I'm reading this and I'm like, well... Uh, What's a caster yeah, well, <laughs> I'm just going back to that Kiss song, but we're not going to go there. Uh, <laughs> uh, I don't need. It. I don't know Sherelle. So. <laughs> She's lovely. Yeah. Okay. Uh, <laughs> uh, so you know what was that? I asked, and uh, he said, "Well, it's a sex site for people oh in the casts." You know, like duh. What is wrong with people? I don't know. <laughs> All hail the internet. So I kept getting more and more emails asking me more and more personal questions about the cast. Not so much my music. One of the emails let me know one of the web pages or blah, 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 blah. one of the emails let me know one of the web pages my pick was on. Okay. So I went to the net, plugged in the site name, and started going through all the picks and found mine from the oh festival. My oh my god. No, my Here god. I thought, wow. <laughs> my career is finally getting the kickstart it deserves with my new album, and it was a sex site that was into casting. Jesus. Uh, <laughs> you wouldn't believe all the comments on the photo. Most of <laughs> no, uh, I can't repeat. <laughs> but the bottom line was all of a sudden I had become a sex goddess to the cast community. Uh, so someone from the festival must have had that fetish I didn't even know existed. Yeah, me too. So, <laughs> so what is, I just, again, I have to say, what is with people? All PR is good PR. <laughs> well, it's all good PR. Right? That's, uh, that's one fetish I missed, so. Uh, a few papers like the province and Sun picked up the story. Oh, great. It was in the paper. Can was, you imagine? Yeah, awesome. This is what I'm known for. So, alas, my solo career will forever be shadowed by my cast. <laughs> Thank God for Stone Poets and Head. Yeah. Uh, anyway, uh, yeah, check out uh, Sherelle's music at uh, sherellejardine.ca. Uh, and, I mean, if you want to know some of the comments that she couldn't, uh, that she might share with we them. We don't. We don't. Or, you know, actually, you know what? I think I should just go onto a casting site now and see if we can find her picture. You can point it out then. Everybody uh, after the show, Sherelle, because now I said you're gorgeous, is going to be checking out the caster sites. I don't. Casters. What is with people? I, you know, hey, I'm not judging. If there are casters out there watching, cast on, cast off, cast whatever on, it is that you do off. as a caster. <laughs> Oh my God! All right, I'm, I'm gonna read a story now. This is from uh, my good buddy I've known Doug for years. So Doug Manzoff is a sound tech god from Edmonton, um, and Doug was kind enough to send us a couple stories. This first one, he says, "Hey Kelly, I have a lot of road stories, but here's a good one or a bad one, depending on how you look at it." We were playing in Marathon, Ontario, in 1987. And myself and the light guy went out for supper on Saturday, and just before the end of the first set, both of us were running to the bathroom to get sick. Turns out both of them had gotten food poisoning. Uh, we made it through the night, and teardown was, you know, was brutal because they were getting sick every hour. Uh, so now the poor guys have to then, because the show must go on, right? So they, they go on to travel to Kenora, uh, Ontario, which is about eight hours away. And about two hours out of Kenora, the motor blows up the... <laughs> And then where were they coming from? Uh, they were coming from Marathon, Ontario. And they were... Well, yeah, anywhere three hours within Kenora's... You're in the middle of nothing. In the middle of nowhere, the motor blows up in the vehicle. Like, what a rough day. It right? never rains it pours. <laughs> right? Um, so the band manages to get a ride off some kind stranger. Um, and we're sleeping, obviously, because they don't feel that great. And we have no idea what is going on, really. Um, so they wake up hours later, and they hear dogs barking. We run to the back of the bus, and the dogs kept them hostage there for about an hour. This is a day from hell. <laughs> Until the junkyard guy comes to let us out. The junkyard guy. The junkyard guy. guy. So apparently they're in a junkyard. Yeah. 
And then we have to walk to the hotel, which is about another hour away. Good times on the Tom road, eh? That bad, bad Leroy Brown's junkyard <laughs> dog. <laughs> We're not sure. Oh my Jeez. God! Thanks for sending that in, Doug. Like that's a. I've had some rough days on the road, and and granted, there's times when you're sick or you just you know you're just not down, you're just well, not into it. Because some most times, I mean, it's like it's not just one thing. It's, it's it, like, when hey, it rains, it pours, right? It's like, hey, nine things went wrong, but you know we made it and. Uh, <laughs> Yeah. We plugged in like two minutes before we're supposed to start playing, so all is good. Yeah. Why not? Yeah, those days, right? I need my appendix out. The bar just burned down and the van broke. So, yeah, man, it's the life on the road. <laughs> <laughs> all right, over, over to you, Raz. Okay, <laughs> this one comes from, hey, I know this guy. Sheldon Chikaliak from the Coda Blues, guitarist and vocalist. Coda has a great story from what... When we played the Waterloo Lodge in 2019, the band had just started to play some sexy blues when a young y'all started dancing seductively in front of the stage, licking her lips. <laughs> I and all the band members, <laughs> this was pretty fun. Gotta go, I hate the old lip lickers. There might be some lip lickers watching right now. It's okay, hey, do your thing, sisters. Uh, yeah, go ahead. Cast on. on. Cast on. <laughs> <laughs> That's going to be a thing now. Cast on. Cast on. <laughs> Don't be licking your lips. Our new keyboard player had a tough time keeping his composure, but managed to avoid eye contact. After our song, we went, we sent a drink over to the gal and thanked her for her performance. No, doubt. <laughs> we had a packed house all weekend, and we've always had a great time there. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Yes. A lip liquor story. A lip liquor story. You know, I will say this, something I was just kind of observing as I was going over the stories this week. Most of these stories did not come from married men. <laughs> and I was thinking about that. All these. Uh, Sherelle Jardine, of course, is the wife of Mark Gladstone, the prison keyboard board player. And uh, Mark has a story coming up here for us, too. Uh, Mark is also with Stone Poets. But I just kind of noticed that all of my married friends that I asked for stories, really not too many of the married guys wanted to send well, stories. I... And I'm thinking your lip liquor story. That's my answer. I'm pretty sure that's the reason. <laughs> the, like, oh no, oh no, Kelly, sister, I ain't going down that road. <laughs> I'm not sharing any of my road stories and camping so on the couch for a month. The internet back in the day on the road, man, it would have been a lot more divorce court. <laughs> Hell yeah. Nice. <laughs> well, we got another one here uh, uh, from uh, a local uh, Lethbridge vocalist, uh, Brianne Urban. Uh, <laughs> nice. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Canada Day celebration at Henderson Lake. I mean, anybody that's played Lethbridge and has any, you know, <laughs> age behind them, have, you know, has probably done that. I'm not, you know, belittling it, but I'm that's that Henderson Lake Canada Day. That's a big deal. That's what you do. That's what you do. And it's all day, right? Hopefully this year we'll get back to it. Uh, yeah, I've only been here four years, so I haven't done it yet. Anyway, uh, Canada Day celebration at Henderson Lake. Uh, Brianne says. Uh, I had one broken rib and one cracked one, uh, but figured the show must go on. So during the last note of "Don't start believing," don't stop believing. Don't start. Don't, don't, don't stop believing. I heard that song. Uh, I felt a crack, and one goes snap. Uh, <laughs> held my hand against my rib. Uh, finished the song. Walked off stage to get violently ill. Um, <laughs> which, yeah, that would happen. Just the shock alone, probably. My goodness. But I can't. But uh, she went back on, finished the set. What a trooper! Yeah, what a trooper. This isn't the only gig I've done with a busted rib. Hold it! I'm gonna stop you right there, Ian. Yeah, Brian. <laughs> I just gotta say this, uh, Brian Urban. You just finished saying that this is not the first time I've done a gig with a broken rib. <laughs> we want to know what you're doing in your extracurricular really, activity. Uh, I just want to see the stage show. Right, I mean, we gotta see. Like, are you yeah. are you hog wrestling? Are you yeah. are you drop kicking people? Are you like, it's how are you getting these broken ribs? Stage dive fail. I stage dive fail. There we fail. go. I've seen those. <laughs> well, you're a trooper, Brianna. Wow. Yeah. That that that's yeah. I did one um, uh, similar. Uh, I was at a gig and I, I I destroyed my leg and my ankle doing. I thought I could fly. Anyway, um, <laughs> so I broke them both. <laughs> Yeah, uh, I did that, and uh, later on I had to play that night, and I figured, well, you know, as long as 
like keep it whatever and being a bass player you know low end rumble had no clue set it up sat down pulled the cabinet over basically straight at my broken bones and the first note I hit oh uh, I cried uh, a little bit uh, yeah <laughs> slight whimper oh it was a slight whimper <laughs> I had no clue that their bones would battle like that so yeah Brienne I oh so we feel your pain, sister. Oh, so very much. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> The worst I ever, the worst injury I ever had was a broken toe, and this is when I was doing the hypnotist show, and I couldn't get a boot on that. You know, I'm getting ready for the gig, and I can't put a shoe on that my right foot. So like, what to do? What to do? The you know the place is full. It's like, well, I guess I'm going on in my bare feet, because you know what are you going to do? Um, and so I just kind of make made a joke that you know you wait next week all the hypnotists will be in their bare feet because I'm starting a trend and whatever. But I felt a, I felt a little off. I have to admit, I felt a little off with a broken toe, but broken ribs, Brianna. Good God, man. Well, and singing, right? And singing, good point, with a broken, with a broken rib. Yeah. <laughs> I can't feel my diaphragm. All right, well, I got a story here from uh, Craig, Craig Basita is a, a vocalist here and a guitar player from right here from Lethbridge. He lives part-time in Hawaii. And Craig says this, definitely one of the most memorable wild moments that comes to my mind was in the early 80s. I was touring with a band as their drummer. Oh, this one is good. I remember this one. We just finished playing in Edmonton, and we were going to play Lethbridge next. The guitarist in the band, and we'll call him Bill, but you know who you are. He liked his weed. A lot. He liked it a lot. And uh, we were leaving on the highway, uh, leaving Edmonton around 2 p.m. in the afternoon. All of us are on the band tour bus, 20 minutes onto the highway, and Bill starts freaking out because he needs to get high and apparently doesn't have any weed. LOL, oh my, I'm sitting quietly reading my modern drummer magazine when Bill threatens to do something weird if they don't turn the bus around and go back to Edmonton, <laughs> which is 20 minutes back on the highway. Uh, I, I just like, Bill, I think there's 12-step programs for people like that, but but anyway, who am I to judge, right? Everyone, do something weird. <laughs> get me my weed or we're all going to hell, right? Uh, so everyone tells Bill to relax. Um, he's yelling out loud that he's not going all the way to Lethbridge on straight time. <laughs> that's that's uh, I'm thinking that's just weed time for not high, right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, so by this point, I can see that he is going. Uh, he is serious. Like he he's dead serious. Uh, he goes to the front of the bus. Get a load of this. This is on the highway while in motion. Opens up the door as we're flying down the highway, and this bill guy starts violently throwing everyone's luggage into the ditch off the highway, screaming, turn the bus around, turn the bus around. Piece by piece, the luggage went out except for Craig's. He said, I, I mean, I'm thinking fists would be flying I'm, by this time. I'm thinking Bill would have been tossed off the bus. But. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So piece by piece, the luggage, uh, the luggage is on the highway. It took, uh, by the time the bus, you know, finally, obviously, they pulled over. Um, by the time the bus stopped, we had to backtrack over half a mile back to collect everyone's luggage and stuff from the highway. Could you imagine? Mm. Um, and grab everyone's stuff. Uh, it took over three hours. Then we go all the way back to Edmonton to score some buds to keep Bill happy. Uh, we ended up rolling into Lethbridge at 3 a.m., higher than kites. Every time I'm on that highway, I think about that trip, no doubt. <laughs> and Craig sends uh, definitely a rock star moment. Oh, yeah. <laughs> You a lucky guy, Bill. Don't lose his bed. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Craig, for sending that one. And holy crap! Yeah. <laughs> Musicians, uh, you know, they can be temperamental and and, and uh, slightly demanding at times. But wow. That's real diva. <laughs> That's diva. That's diva action right there. That's some, uh, <laughs> Bill, if you're watching, we hope you found the help you need, buddy. <laughs> I Bill. I Bill. But it's legal now, so Bill's cool. It's legal now, but now, now how crazy is it? There's no excuse, Bill. No excuse. You gotta have it all the time, twenty-four seven. All right, Ian. Oh, is it me again? Or is it? Uh, yeah, uh, sure, why not? Uh, Sean Garland, uh, Calgary lead singer of Bad Boys of Bedlam. <laughs> That'd be, That's a cool name. Sounds like it'd be better than Bing Crosby at the Bad Boys of Bedlam. <laughs> it's beautiful. Uh, uh, so, uh, it was 1988, and I had just joined a road band with Neil Hanna. 
One night I met a girl who decided to take me home, and the next morning I woke up to hear a man's voice screaming, Get out! Uh, <laughs> I looked up and to my sheer horror saw the bar manager. Turns out uh, she was his girlfriend. And while he was yelling me, yelling at me to get out, this uh, crazy woman tries to pull me back into bed. Jesus. She was a lip licker. I know it. She was a lip licker. <laughs> Here we go. Cast on. Uh, you can probably a caster yeah. too. So <laughs> I got up quickly. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> So, uh, <laughs> I got up quickly, I got uh, dressed quickly, and uh, then she says, watch out, he may punch you on the way out. <laughs> you think? I'm like, it says no shit here, but yeah, no. Yeah, no uh, duh, you ain't getting no kiss, Bob. That's probably going to happen. Uh, thankfully, uh, he let me go, and somehow <laughs> we made it through the week and went on to our uh, gig in the next town. It gets better. Yeah. So we get there, and uh, you'll never <coughs> guess who the new bar, bar manager was. It was the guy from the last week. Uh, it was him at his new job. Jesus. <coughs> what are the odds? Yeah, right? I know. One, what you got to stop. <laughs> it's not the Grateful Dead. Stop following me. Uh, so it was another week of dealing with him and his crazy woman chasing me. By the end of the week, he forgave me and ended up uh, drinking Jack Daniels on stage with me. No self. Try not to sleep. Try. 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 It says try, right? Try. try not to sleep with the bar manager's girlfriend. It's awkward. <laughs> it gets awkward. It's awkward. And Buddy probably spent the whole week wondering if he was going to get punched. Oh. You know, maybe tonight's the night that he turns. And I, I would. Well, it ends well. That guy would, walks up with a shot of Jack and says, here, drink this. I wouldn't be drinking it. <laughs> yeah, it's like, what's yeah, in yeah, it? Yeah, yeah. No, I don't He's sleeping so. in 30 minutes. <laughs> you got roofies in here. Yeah. <laughs> Jesus. That's nasty. Now, I guess I guess now we kind of know where the where the uh, term that was coined. You know what happens on the road stays on the road. Uh, these are good examples of why. That's Cold a, in the that's road. Why it's Cold a thing. in the road. <laughs> this right here is why that's a thing. So Over to you, Raz. It's like Fight Club. Over to Raz. Right. It's like Ian just said. It's like Fight Club. Yeah, we don't talk about it. We do. <laughs> Rule number one. <laughs> okay. The lead vocalist in with Killinger, Killinger, Edmonton. Friend of yours? Yeah, it's a friend of mine. Yeah, friend I've known for years. Yep. Yeah. And here's what Dave has to say. I once had a conversation with a certain person that was big time producer, and we just had finished recording an album, the album Killinger in 2010. I'd gotten a message on my MySpace way back, and I thought it was a joke. Somebody's trying to catfish me, but I decided to entertain the message and send back, and lo and behold, it was actually talking to a producer. So in order for me to make sure I had the right person, I asked for the number so I could call him and talk to him over the phone. He gave me his number and I talked to him for about an hour. This producer had me, this producer had told me he really liked what he heard and he wanted to fly us down to Arizona. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. The wolf, wolf man, oh, I'm getting excited for you, buddy, right here. <laughs> Going to Arizona. <laughs> yeah. Going to Arizona with a... <coughs> Never, yeah. That one. That one. Just needed a push to get going. All I had... I had told you the record company we had happened and... No. I had told the record company that we had happened and they were not ready to do or spend any money to go re-record or even though opportunity knocked loudly. I wanted to go do it, but the record company had no interest and it turns out it was one of the biggest mistakes the band had... The biggest mistakes of the band ever, because as it turns out, the producer's name was Bo Hill, who wound up producing five chart reach albums for Rat. Rat. That Rat. Los Angeles, 1984. <laughs> Rat. That guy. With two yeah. T's. Rat with two T's. <laughs> two T's. I met Ace Frehley in Edmonton, had drinks with him, and at one point, he asked me if I could find some girls as being in. So we're talking Ace, Ace Frehley from Kiss. Ace Frehley from He was from drinking Kiss. with. Dave, you were, you were drinking with Ace Freely from Kiss? I want to know how that happened. He must have been drinking milk, man. <laughs> he's, he's a pretty straight-laced guy, isn't he? So I went walking through the bar, and I was asking girls, hey, do you ladies want to come hang out with lead guitar player from Kiss? Just about every girl I asked wanted to know, is this guy, is this the guy with the tongue? Um, no, it was not. <laughs> Where's Sadly, the guy with the 10-inch tongue? <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't Gene Simmons, so Ace, Ace got nothing that night, man, because... <laughs> 
He ain't got the tongue. Oh, my God. <laughs> he didn't have well, good it. Good try, Dave. Good try. I'm when you're ace, when you're ace, freely, and you can't get a date, times are tough. <laughs> <laughs> Time to get the tongue, I guess. It's got to be a rough gig when you're in a band with the guy with the tongue, right? This because one <laughs> this one I love. Uh, this comes from uh, Doug Mansoff, sound tech mm -hmm. uh, from Edmonton. Hi, Doug. And this is the story of the amazing skip. This See, is a good one. I love this story. This, this is, is a good awesome. One. Not a nightmare, but it's 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 ingenious. So, uh, little dog writes. No, <laughs> um, I'm doing sound for a band in Brooks in 1988. Uh, we get there on a Sunday, and we're setting up, and the lead singer and the drummer get into a fight. Drummer wins the fight, and the next morning we wake up to find that the lead singer has taken his van and gone back to Winnipeg. I'm gonna take my toys and go. I'm going now. <laughs> Uh, you, you went up against a drummer, dude. It's, yeah, never mind. <laughs> uh, so, so now we don't have a lead singer. Uh, so on Monday and Tuesday, we all sing and uh, we all sing and uh, get people up from the crowd to sing. And the owner's daughter gets up to sing, and she's pretty damn good. And uh, I was touring through there, I think in '91. And if it's the same owner's daughter in the same book, Brooke. Uh, Bar and Brooks, yeah, I got a story to share with you, Doug, too. Uh, anyway, can't be shared on the air. No, I'm we can't share that one. All right. Uh, blah 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 blah. I was so. Um, uh, he says that uh, I'm sure we would have been fired without her vocals. So, on Wednesday we have to go to Calgary to pick up a uh, new singer who's flying out of uh, Winnipeg. So I pick him up right away. He starts and starts learning the songs. Pretty tough to learn 40 songs in four or five hours. No but doubt, no doubt. We've, we've all been on the road we've all and been had there. to switch gears at the last moment. Yep. And it's like, oh, we got to learn like 20 tunes for tonight. And you just do it because that's kind of what we do. Uh, <laughs> okay, so we got all the song lyrics written out for him. And uh, so he places them all across the stage. So he doesn't fumble, has to fumble with them all night. And he knows we're going to be short on material. So he goes around the crowd uh, during the night and starts playing the amazing Kreska. This is check in, check yeah, out with this. This is good. And uh, <laughs> reading people's mind and telling them what uh, kind of vehicle they drive. He does this about 20 times, is correct on all of them. Uh, and the crowd is literally blown away. As you would be. Out, well, yeah, it's, it's a good one. The guy on the stage is walking around telling people exactly what kind of car they drive. That's pretty. That's a that's a good party yeah. trick. <laughs> All of us in the band want to know how he does it, so he tells us he's out in the truck learning his songs and watching what people are driving up in. <laughs> I mean, uh, pretty simple there. But the band was blown away, and uh, I mean, they did really good at the gig. And it's, I mean, this. Uh, he just kept doing it until they learned all the songs and. Uh, I guess they dubbed him the, the Amazing Skip. <laughs> yeah. No doubt, and rightly so. Yeah. I guess That's the, a great the, story. The band that they were doing that were called uh, Impact. Changed it to Dizzy Bitch uh, <laughs> next week, but no place to put Bitch up on the sign, so it was Dizzy B. Dizzy, Which, Dizzy, was, Dizzy right? B was, Dizzy B sounds like a good bar name, though. It was a lot more conservative, I think, even back then, right? Dizzy, what was? They should have called it, uh, you know, The Amazing Skip. Yeah, show. I mean, he could have just run that trick every. Legendary that trick Brooks. blows away smoke on the water any day of the week, so that would have, that would have been something to keep doing. You're yeah. mad, Doug. You're yeah. mad. That's cool. Thanks so much, Doug, for sending that in. Cool. Good stuff. Okay, I got one here from uh, Marlene Lynch. Now, Marlene Lynch um, is the wife of a really good friend of mine and my partner, uh, Paul. Uh, Mike Lynch is a, was a guitarist and vocalist uh, from the band Passage. Um, unfortunately, we lost Mike a couple of years ago, and so at this time, I just want to dedicate this show to Mike because he would have thought this was awesome. Uh, Mike had a great sense of humor, and uh, so this show is this show is dedicated to Mike. And a couple of stories submitted by his lovely wife Marlene. So Mike's band Passage was playing one evening, and they were totally rocking it out when the drummer noticed that tons of girls were looking at Mike's brother Terry, like staring at him. Upon further investigation into the audience's fascination with Terry, the band realized that apparently he had ripped his pants in the front, where the sun don't shine, Marlene says, and as luck would have it, happened to be going, or as luck would have it or not, depending on who you are, happened to be going commando this particular evening. <laughs> These are Marlene's words. Mm -hmm. His full-on junk was they, breezing in the wind. <laughs> depending on how cold it was out. <laughs> and, the, and the girls were having a good time watching, no doubt. 
I wonder if there were any lip lickers in the crowd that night. I'm sorry. <laughs> Women on the road can be wild. I've seen it. I've seen it in the band. No, no, so no. now I, I got to wonder if that was on purpose or on accident. I don't know. What do you think? Maybe he needed a place to stay that night. I don't know. Well, Jan 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 <laughs> Janet Jackson did it. Yeah, you know, Janet, Janet Jackson. Jackson. I don't know. We're still not sure if that was a wardrobe malfunction. malfunction. I don't know called. about that. The jury's still out on that one. Yeah, okay. Um, yeah, and then another one that Marlene had to share was uh, the passengers playing on a military base. Those are always fun and, and crazy. Yep. Uh, usually chairs flying and, uh, yeah. The band was playing a show and Michael and Terry's parents were there and something bad always happens. When your grandparents come out or your families come out, that's when something's going to go wrong. Uh, for sure. It's usually them. <laughs> depending on well, my family, depending yeah. on who your family is. Yeah. Um, so yeah, Mike and Terry's parents were there um, and Terry was trying to impress the parents with his rock star moves and twirled his guitar around in true guitar god fashion, as you do, um, and managed to crack Mike right in the face <laughs> with his guitar, um, hitting Mike in the mouth and broke all his teeth. Oh! In front of the grandparents, in front of the parents. And in front of the show. <laughs> it's a punk show. What a performance! Yeah, and the crowd went wild. I don't know about punk. I'm thinking more of a country show. But that, but that's, just, but that's just me. No, sorry. I just defended all the country fans. Um, <laughs> but I digress. Uh, yeah, and then another time they were all rocking, rocking themselves out to an Aussie tune, and uh, the vibrations moved the light cases, causing this domino effect, um, and the speakers all crashed to the floor. Talk about your crazy dream. <laughs> That will happen. You will never forget that. You <laughs> will nasty. never forget that. And it's all about the memories. Trust me. Nasty. All about the memories. Right on. Thanks for sending that in, Marlene. And yeah. Mike, buddy, we know you're watching. We love you. And uh, we're going to turn you over to Rasno. All right. We got one here from Mr. Mark Gladstone, Vancouver keyboard player, vocalist for Prism and the Stone Poets. He says he's sifting through the foggy memory banks, and it gets pretty foggy. On the way... <laughs> Two over-the-top, triple X-rated. Ooh, I hope this is okay for the radio. <laughs> okay, plug your ears, see Hide kids. your kids. Just, just yeah. for two minutes. Yeah. Oh, yes, I know this story. Good one, Mark. Uh, yeah, hide your kids. If your kids are watching, now's the time for them not to, not to be in the room. Give plugs right now. Do it. <laughs> I'm reminded of this little gem. It was while I was in... Dug in the slugs. I opened up for them once, yeah. And we were playing an outdoor festival in Vanderhoof, B.C. Played there, too. Which is pretty much the middle of the province near Prince George. I mention that because it's cold in there at certain times of year. And this was one of those times. And it was a matter of somewhat of the story. We were in the middle of the show and the band is vamping over a section which allows for Doug to do his famous improv comedy. You know, Doug, eh? Oh, yeah. Doug Bennett, yep. Yeah. Yeah. He's now Ted. But anyway, Ted, Ted's a Doug. Yeah, the, you know Ted's I mean. the new Doug. Okay. If you've never seen it, think Don Rickles. But musical, Doug is. Doug quite often would pull several girls out of the audience. <laughs> As you do. <laughs> lip lickers. Up on stage, lip lickers. There you go. Up on stage, he would get them to turn around and have the audience judge the best booty. <laughs> Hey, keep the earplugs in, kids. Sex is you bet, but all in good thought. No, all in good fun, though. That was Doug. Anyway, on this gig, he decides to change it up a bit. This time, it's the boys. Oh, no. So he's got uh, the boys up, and he's checking the... Okay. Now, now, she's, now, now Kelly's interested. Now I'm yeah. paying attention. Yeah. And now, just, not just any <laughs> boys. Say what, Ross? Say the what? Say what? security guards. It's security guards. Go, calm yourself now. <laughs> Think on. This time it's the security guards lined in the perimeter bins in front of the stage. He gets all the security guys to turn around so they're back into the audience. Okay, I'm gonna get you to I'm room. gonna get you to just go back a sentence because I totally missed that. Are you? Sorry to interrupt you. Oh, just, sorry, just, just cool. slow down no, a minute. We're, we're professional here. We, we know what we're doing. <laughs> I don't want anyone to miss this. <laughs> this time it's the security guys lined in the perimeter fence in front of the stage, so they turn around and the girls are checking the Security guys, oh, you, you, you picture this? <laughs> he gets all the way to security, he gets all the security guys to turn around so their backs are to the audience. And the girls in Vanderhoof are really getting into it. Lots of cheering and screaming for their favorite butt. <laughs> so the guards get a little braver, and the pastor dropped. <laughs> Sorry, Mom. <laughs> Not all of them at first, but eventually. They all succumb to peer pressure. There's about ten naked bleep asses 
<laughs> on the stage, which sounds like some very <clears throat> horny women, okay, having a great time. <laughs> oh, yeah. Is that who's Am I blushing yet? All in good fun, right? And then one of the security guys gets real brave and turns around to face the screaming masses. I'm t- <laughs> I'm Ross, talking. are you drunk? <laughs> I'm getting drunk just off of this. I'm talking full frontal, pally whacker glowing, proud of the lights, and then another, <laughs> and then another, and so on. Pre pressure, right? But that's one. He's standing square in front of the band, facing right at us. He's looking down at us. He doesn't like what he sees. I don't know. Remember, I said it was cold. (laughs) No. Okay, this is where it gets really bad. And actually, I I had to think about whether or not to use this or not. But it's pretty pretty out there. And that's the name of the game here today. So seriously, if you have kids, yeah. Or if you're a caster, you may probably have it. We're plowing through it. We're plowing through it. We're halfway there. We're going to take it home. Take it home, Take it home, Raz. I said it was cold up there. Looks kind of like a little mushroom on a cap with a brillo pad. <laughs> okay, we get the, we yeah, get the so visual. So you reach it down with both hands, one to hold the base and one... Okay, okay. <laughs> using the overhead. Okay, yeah, so he was just going to make that soldier stand up right in front of the entire crowd. And uh, and that's an actual story that happened to Mark Gladstone. Wow. Well, that beats my that beats my naked mayor of that town that I can't say that starts with an A and ends with an X. Well, I don't have. That's naked. definitely cutting edge, Mark. That's I cutting edge, that, Mark. Man, much. Jesus. <laughs> I'll, I'll shoot one of mine out just to see if I can beat you. <laughs> <laughs> now it's a competition. Yeah, there we go. I mean, I was thinking there's a million things, and I mean, maybe on a repeat show, you know, we can talk about getting our sound gear repossessed midweek and medicine <laughs> hats. Um, um, taking, uh, oh, I don't remember how many cases of beer for payment playing in Swan River, Manitoba, um, mouthing off the wrong employee in Drayton Valley and getting fired. That was fun. Uh, yeah, you know, stuck on logging roads trying to get, you know, from the States back into Canada when your drummer doesn't have the right information. Uh, lots of fun. But... By far the best one, I, uh, and it was like, the, it's, I'll keep it real short, but it's basically the first four weeks on the road, and it never got better. <laughs> uh, we complained. <laughs> oh, it was ridiculous. Um, but, uh, you know, so we were all, we'd been playing for, oh, a year, year and a half, and kind of a big deal back where we were from. If you needed a band, you know, we were the ones you hired. Um, and it just came down to, that's all we did. So we lived, so, you know, you play the song, five times a day in rehearsals for, you know, a year and a half, you know, you probably know the song, it's probably pretty good. So we finally decided we're going to hit the road, get an agent, and leave, and uh, first gig was Flin Flon, Manitoba. In there? Oh. Yeah, it's, uh, yeah, in the winter, it's, or no, it wasn't the winter, it was, it was still cold though, it was spring. Um, so the thing was, meet uh, at the bus, uh, shoot to Winnipeg, pick up uh, gear and the sound guy, and then straight north up to Flin Flon. So, everything's good, get there, guy says, oh, gear's late. Sundays, that's what happened. When you rent gear, you have to wait for the band to show up to return the gear. They go through the gear, and then you load up your gear. Right. Depending on who you're renting through. Um, And he says, uh, they're late. Oh, and by the way, um, the sound guy can't do it now. (laughs) So, we're, it's like, we we gotta go. We gotta get tomorrow in Flin Flon, so worked it out it's like okay well the our light guy at the time said you know I, I I can I can put it together it'll be fine it'll be fine so it was I think it was like six or seven o'clock we, we left for Winnipeg first thing in the morning and it was like six or seven when we left that night finally getting everything on drove all night dusty bus um, you know green singers we well, don't know that you should sleep in between you know <laughs> rock and rolls and you know Smoke, everyone's smoking in the bus and blah, blah, blah. So we got there around, geez, 8 o'clock in the morning or something like that. Just happy to get there and uh, we say, okay, everyone just, you know, go sleep for a little bit. And for about four hours, get up, set it up, get her going. So I was rooming with our keyboard player, Brent, and I get this call in our room and it's front desk. Yeah, you're uh, your light guy or sound guy, whatever she said. Uh, needs some help on stage. So we're like, okay, I'm tired. 
get up, you know, no, you know, not, not really rushing. So we come down and we come around the corner and our light guy is holding up the trussing on the stage. <laughs> this is what the person at the front desk meant by your guy needs a hand. <laughs> like literally, like, literally he's, he's holding up the trussing. <laughs> he's holding up the trussing and we just rush in and it's like, oh. So we finished setting up, whatever, and everything's good. I said, okay, it should be fine, right? Good. So owner comes in, he says, hey, blah, 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 you know. And he says, what's really cool is we got a band called Ocean Pacific. And back when we were playing that gig, they were big. They had a couple of hits on the radio, and they're international, I think. Part, I, someone's going to hit me, like Parts of the Birds and stuff like that, I, I think. Okay. Um, so pretty big act. So he says, yeah, you're going to be packed. Show's over at like 10 o'clock, right? Boom. So we're there, we're ready to do this. And, I didn't get ready and <clears throat> a little sore throat, whatever, right? Started up, it's all good, and then all of a sudden, our sound starts going down. Our system starts canceling. Things are wrong. Uh, and then the bar starts filling up. It's of course really packed. Of course. And Monique's having a tough time getting through the songs because she's having to scream because monitors are going to, everything's going down. Uh, turns out the system was not, obviously, wired correctly. Um, so we had the bar owner in the back flipping, <laughs> flipping the breakers to keep us on. And oh my going. god. So it was just a night from hell, right? This is our first, this is Monday night. This is the first <laughs> night professionally on the road, right? Welcome to the road, guys. Yeah, welcome to the road. <laughs> um, so we get done. <clears throat> just get it over with, right, somehow. And um, uh, so we're sitting there just defeated, right? And, uh, you know, we, we get to, we spent all our money on gas to get there. We don't have much money, so we just scrounged together a couple things and we bought a beer. Which anyone, you know, as a working road musician, you know, sometimes you can't afford a beer. We'll have one beer, five straws, please. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> so we're sitting there having our beers, and the owner comes over and he says, uh, he says, uh, I don't know what to say. You know, he says, this is... I mean, he, he said, thank goodness, he said, you know, I can tell it's a good band, mm -hmm. but you got to get this figured out by tomorrow or you're, you're going home. Yeah. You're going home. So we're like, okay. So we're sitting there and we're nursing our beer. And this guy comes over, he just walks over and he just looks at us and we look up and he says, uh, kind of a tough night, eh? <laughs> yeah, no doubt. <laughs> and we, everyone's like biting their tongue to like, okay, yeah, we can answer that, you know, you know, whatever. So he says, well, he says, you know what? He says, um, my name's blah, blah, blah. I, I wish I could name. I know it starts with B or something. I wish I could remember the guy's name. He says, and uh, I'm just in town putting together a uh, laser light show at the other bar in town. And uh, he says, but I used to do um, concert sound for street art back in the day. So we're like, and he says, so if you want. Did says, you hear the angels singing? Yeah, we're like, <laughs> hello. So he says, he says uh, you guys be here first thing in the morning. Like, get up, let's do this, mm -hmm. and I'll set you up, and we'll get you just to run for the whole week. We'll have it set up, and a monkey can run it. So, and then proceeded to buy a couple of cases of beer, and we all sat up and drank, and he told us hilarious road stories that I cannot tell right. on this show. But, so that was great. We got through the week. Fantastic. Now we're off to Yorkton. Show up in Yorkton. Van broke down in between. So we're in Yorkton at Regattas, which you know Holly's. Yeah. Holly's had just opened up that week we played there. So it was a brand new bar. Nobody at our bar. Regardless, uh, it was in the basement. It's called Regattas. It's mm -hmm. not, you can't find it there anymore. Hooks up the lights. And we're like, okay, finally. Everything's ready. Boom, boom, boom. Lights on. Pop, 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 <laughs> pop, pop, pop. All the lights go down. <laughs> Whoever was there the week before didn't wire them. So, you know, we're going, yeah, okay, so let's go to Regina and pick up our new sound guy and new lights. Got that figured out, blah, blah, blah. That worked. Um, and then we got another sound guy, another sound, sound guy number three, sent in uh, from Vancouver to take over that. Then we got to Brooks where the, she was trying to pick us up. And it just, it just kept going. It just, in the Sound guy was like, we got there, and the sound guy goes, we said, well, do you want to set the system and, you know, EQ? And he says, well, the EQ sounded good last week. And, I mean, we're not sound guys, but it's like it's a different room, different EQ. So right. we sent him home, finally made it to Jasper where everything just kind of, it just worked out. Right. And then we were good for And then, then you were but, golden. But what a rough just, start, though. Like, what a rough oh, way to, like, initiate yourself on the road. And leaving Brooks? <laughs> That's one for another one. We got pulled over by the cops at about 3 in the morning. They thought we had knocked off a bank. 
True story. <laughs> True story. They had the cops in front of us. But lights, you look so wholesome. <laughs> in a school bus, painted gray. Because that's what you're robbing banks. That's you're robbing the bank. And I remember we got out. I think it was Brent, our keyword player, and they, they yelled. And I was driving, and he came, came out, and they're yelling at him, where were you? Where were you just now? And he's holding a big gulp. <laughs> And a Apparently we're at 7-Eleven. 7-Eleven. It's like, uh, I don't know where it's... Anyway, <laughs> that's my crazy one anyway. That's a... You know, when stuff like that happens on the road, and it's just funny, and you were talking about, you know, not... You know, lights going down, gear, you know, gear getting repoed in the middle of a gig. I've got a story. Uh, so my longtime band partner and I, Paul, we had a five-piece band with a full crew, and then we ended up... Um, so what happened was our, our five-piece band was in Jasper, and the drummer decides he's going to quit. As you do, like, I'm out of here. Drummers. Drummers. <laughs> what? <laughs> so, yes, drummers are the worst. I think it's because they get, like, they get middle child syndrome because they're way at the back. Well, that's, my, that's my theory. Their <laughs> job is to hit things. I mean, really, when it comes down to it. So anyway, the drummer decides he's done after all these years. And so uh, Paul and I go back to my mom's in Saskatchewan, basically with her tail between our legs. And, and we're going to put a duo together because now we've... We've got all these friends that have duels and they're making money and they're working every week and we just wanted to stay on the road. So we, we you know, we drive my mom crazy for a couple of months. No to quit on you. Right? <laughs> Putting together a show. Yeah. So all is good. We, uh, we get an agent and she books us, you know, two months worth of work in advance. The only problem is we don't have a vehicle. So it's the, it's the day before we're going on the road, we don't have a vehicle. So we were on the road without a vehicle. The and day before. And the day like, before, we're like, well, I don't know. I guess we'll figure it out. I've always been that way, though. You know, something will come together, you know. So you have checklist, you know, <laughs> gear, suitcase. Oh, yeah. Did anyone know, line up a vehicle? <laughs> vehicle, wait a minute. <laughs> so anyway, our first, uh, our first gig the agent booked us was in a place called Domain, Saskatchewan. Now, I don't know if you guys have ever been to Domain, Saskatchewan. Mm -hmm. no. um, we had no idea what to expect. My brother-in-law packs all our gear, and of course it's a lot less with a duo, but we still had the full PA and, and, uh, and gear. And so he loads us up. We go to Domain. It's the dead of winter. We roll into town, and it's one of those one-horse towns that is literally one street. I don't even think there was houses. I don't, I don't know where the people lived. So I think the idea is that people would come from the little hamlets around, and there's just like a few defunct, boarded up buildings. They I think hear there's music, and then people just like peek out they poke out of the bushes and stuff. Yeah, all right. <laughs> they show up like Bernie Sanders. I, <laughs> I've got the visual. Right. Yeah, good. So, and my brother-in-law pulls up, and he's like, "I don't know if I want to leave you guys here." And so there's like the hotel, which is literally the only open, legit business in the town. There's no restaurants. We have no clue how we're going to eat, and we have no clue how we're going to get to the gig that we're going to go to once we're done in Domain. And, of course, back in those days, the gigs were six nights. You know, you showed up, so, you know, Monday to Saturday. So we just put a plan into motion. We called it the Secret Life Scam Ride Program. And so we'd, we'd kind of settle into the gig, and then on Wednesday, um, it would usually be my job to start schmoozing the local guys and, uh, hey, what are you doing Sunday? Want to go to Saskatoon? And uh, we'd, we would pay for the gas, and we would shoot them 50 bucks. And, you know, the good thing is when you live in Domain, yeah, you're bored as hell. And you're like, yeah, road work. trip. <laughs> Where are we going? And, uh, and we did that for probably, we were on the road without a vehicle for probably two months. Wow. And, uh, and, we, and we pulled it off. And just every week around, you know, we just start drinking with people. And then by Sunday, we'd have a ride lined up, and they'd load our gear up. That's one for the book, yeah. That is dedication. That's uh, where, where there's a will, there's a way at its My finest goodness. right now. <laughs> Jeez. Yeah, so. Oh. Raz, do you have a story to share there? Well, you know. <laughs> do I have any? Oh, I, you know, I have lots of stories. I got <laughs> I'll tell you, while you're thinking about that, Raz, I have one more. This is another hypnotist story. So, uh, we were doing one of our hypnotist shows up in uh, somewhere in BC. It's probably good if I don't mention the name of the town anyway, but it was somewhere in BC. And uh, the, the bar was full, and at the very back there was a group of bikers. And, uh, they, you know, I didn't generally get bikers out to my show. And they just looked kind of out of place. And, and they looked pretty rough, and they looked pretty scary, and they were wearing colors. And so I go ahead with my show, and they're, you know, I'm noticing they're watching intently, and they're kind of whispering. And I'm, and I'm thinking, you know, am I going to get bought and sold after or abducted or what after? So I was afraid. And, I mean, I have a lot of biker friends. They're good people. Um, so I'm not saying anything like that, but it just, it, they just looked odd, you know, they just looked out of place. So after we're done the show, you know, they call us over, they, you know, Paul was my, uh, my sound tech, did all the sound effects, and they sit us down in the, and they, and the one guy says to me, what's it going to cost me to get a private session with you right now? Um, so, you know, I'm, I'm kind of a little bit nervous and I'm, he goes, well, were go. You, were, were you wearing a cast? I was not wearing a cast. <laughs> 
<laughs> Good one. <laughs> so no, um, so he basically wants to go up to my room um, with you know with people, and he wants a private session. Well, I'm not above making a few extra bucks after the show, so yeah, why not? so off we go. And it turns out I'm thinking, you know, maybe they. You know, I don't know if he's got a phobia he wants to go over. Maybe he, maybe he wants to quit smoking because that was the most popular one that I would get. Turns out this gentleman was a bit of a drug dealer. Well, he was a lot of a drug dealer. And he had gotten this huge stash of cocaine in. And he forgot where he where stashed. He, he, he got into the product and he got so out of his mind, he forgot where, like these, I don't know, I don't know how many thousands and thousands of dollars worth. But he could not remember for the life of him where he put it. And uh, he, he was, his life was being threatened. And um, so I tell you, we did the hypnosis. He went no under. Pressure. No he, pressure. Yeah, no pr I, I know. I'm, I'm kind of thinking, oh, my God, please just be a good subject. But uh, the bottom line is that um, he, he went under hard because that's the thing with hypnosis. If you really want it, you're going to yeah. just do what the, hypno the hypnotist is telling you. Hypno. Hypnotist. And, I, and he remembered that he left it under his bike under his floorboards in this quonset and now you, you didn't you didn't Whoa. say that out loud did he or did you did he just remember it no he he, re, he didn't say it out loud but oh, well that would have been dumb been dead then well know, we he'd he had to kill us yeah, he, he told us where it was stashed he'd had to kill us yeah, no they ended up being really super nice guys and so i, I kind of went to bed that night feeling like unlike the mayor that i terrorized in that town i might have actually saved this person's life that day yeah. so my my work had meaning in that but that was a crazy story and uh, he paid me a nice chunk of money and uh threw a little of his product at us which of course we threw in the garbage but uh yeah <laughs> and we went on down the road yep. in a vehicle that we now owned so <laughs> so life was good there again. Go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. okay i got one all right over to your ass <laughs> every every uh back in the day uh Wolfie performed as a cow for a while out there back in the day. Uh, yeah, kiss makeup, custom made outfit. Go out into the crowd. It was uh, hosting the hula hoop contest. The hula hoop contest is over. It was on a break. And uh, Buddy comes over and he, he grabs one of the hula hoops and pulls it apart. And he drops up under the chair, grabs some Long Island iced tea and says, hey, Takes the other end, says, here, put this in your mouth, the buddy. Pours all along, I see all through the hula hoop, swallows the whole thing. I get back about six weeks later. I said, so, so how'd that work out for you? He said, you know those little tiny balls inside there? <laughs> yeah, it was coming out of me for a week, he said. Oh, <laughs> oh man. <laughs> All right, we got we actually we got time for a couple more stories here. So um, I got one here from Lemmy Hangslong uh, from Calgary. Uh, Lemmy's with Blackstone Hex. Uh, so Blackstone Hex was gigging at the Rosen Crown in Banff, our favorite place to get out to get their hex on. I like that favorite place to get your hex on. We had a great gig with all our friends, super busy and all kinds of shenanigans. I love that word. Shenanigans is my word. After all, it was Saturday night in Banff. Afterwards, we were chatting, and we all could have sworn that we had seen a woman in the crowd not wearing pants. <laughs> Lip licker. <laughs> it, was a, it, was, it was a super busy night, packed house, and a crazy dance floor, which made it hard to be 100% sure of what we had thought we had saw. Seen. Saw. Because I imagine there's drinking going on. And, you know, maybe you saw it, maybe you didn't, right? So the next day, we all headed to the Rose and Crown for something to eat on the way out. Of course, we talked about what we had seen, this girl that we thought had no pants. We got to the Rose as it was opening for business and went upstairs and found a table to sit down. The staff member serving us was the guy who hired us. He was there the night before. He asked us what we would like to start with and in the middle of saying it stops and says, wait a minute, I'll be right back. Two minutes later, out he came from behind the bar with a pair of ladies jeans, <laughs> underwear and one sock. Just the other sock was on the highway. I was wondering all those socks go on the highway. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> then he asked us, you guys being the band and all might just know who these belong to. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> we didn't know her, but I'm guessing they wish they did. Yeah. Um, how do you become, s the question is, Lemmy's asking, the question is how do you become separated from your clothes and a sock at the bar? And how the hell did she leave the bar unnoticed without her clothes is the real question, right? And then blame it on the artist. 
<laughs> you mean yeah. the studio? I, mean, I, I, I know, right? It's <laughs> and then let me say, well, uh, well, those are rock and roll secrets, and what happens in BAM stays in BAM. <laughs> Unless you're on the Etc. Oh, yeah. show, we and was, then, you know, we, we just laugh. Sometimes yeah. in that particular bar ourselves. Oh, yeah, yeah. That was a BAMP place. was awesome. That was a place. <laughs> BAMP was, was a lot awesome. of fun. It was like a paid holiday, wasn't it? Absolutely. Oh. Yeah. And, every uh, time. For, every time. Yeah. For, you know, a little prairie boy, Manitoba boy, you know, first time out there, and you wake up in the mountains, it's like, oh, I think I could do this for a while. Too beautiful. You know? Right on. Yeah. Wow, well, this has been so much fun. Yeah. Thank you. I, w I really want to thank Raz, uh, Raz Bruce here, uh, for being my guest host of the day. Uh, Ian Morris, thank you so much, too, for joining in. Also, uh, Ian is joining Etc. as the new tech here at Just FM. So welcome aboard. Yeah. Looking forward to having you thank here. You for making you do that. Yeah, thank you to everyone who sends <laughs> making you do that. <laughs> um, and now, as promised, we have an announcement. I really, oh, yeah. I am so excited about this. Um, so we have a guest on next uh, next Sunday, which will be the 31st, um, and he is a Canadian three-time Gemini Award winner. Um, he has over 12 movies and television shows out, 11 books, and I am really proud to be bringing in via satellite from Toronto next week, Red Green, uh, uh, a.k.a. Steve Smith. Steve Smith. I am thrilled beyond thrilled. Uh, yeah, the guy's a Canadian legend, it right? It doesn't get any more Canadian. Than it, it does not get any more Canadian. Like, you know. Right? Duct tape, yeah. And you know, as everybody, yeah, duct tape, and as everybody knows, <laughs> guys, if they can't find you handsome, they should at least find I'm you handy. handy. <laughs> That's going to be awesome. That's going to be a great yeah. show. Thank you so much for watching, everybody. I really, really appreciate your support. We're going to head out here. Enjoy your day. And uh, we will see you next week with Red Green. Stay safe and sane. Thank you. Yo.